sudden to shoot different fork width frames and I have a theory and today we're going to test that theory to see if I'm right or to see if I'm wrong but I think that there is a relationship between the velocity the speed your ammo is moving and the fork width of the slingshot that you're shooting um, there's a relationship between we all know in shooting a slingshot that when you if your bands are too long, if the elongation is too low, and you try to shoot at a target, and the shot falls off before it gets to the target, in other words, it doesn't reach the target, then you need to shorten your bands. Well, I've been experimenting with finding my preferred setup for shooting at 10 meters. And this is what led me into finding out that I could shoot uh, narrower frames. For those of you who don't know, for years I have shot a 90, dedicated 95 millimeter wide over the top frame or 90 millimeter, T, millimeter Lord help, 90 millimeter TTF. Um, well, now I can shoot, and I've not tried with TTF, but over the top I can shoot anything between 90 and 95. Um, you know, 90 and, 90 and 95 are my preferred, but I can shoot anything in between that. Um, and it was odd to me until I started experimenting with the, you know, the velocity the bands are moving, with how fast the bands are moving. The only way I know to measure that is with a chronograph. Um, to see how fast the shot's moving, that'll give me a rough idea of how, uh, the, of how fast the bands are moving. So I've got my chronograph set up here, and I'm going to turn you guys around, and we're going to take some shots. I'm going to be shooting my new Lions Paul Mark III that I got from Moan. I love this slingshot. I love it. Um, and I chose it because it's 90 millimeters wide. <clears throat> and I've got the band set that's on it, all these band sets. These are the specs for the band sets. They are all Omega Electric White. Uh, 0.45 they are all tapered 16 to 12 they all have the same pouch on them and this is a new pouch I'm trying out um, but the only difference is going to be in the active length this the one who's that's currently on this is hundred and eighty millimeters active length I have a 170 millimeter a 160 millimeter and a 150 millimeter active length band. So I'm gonna get you guys set up where you can see both me and the chronograph. Um, and also, not just the chronograph, you'll be able to see me, the chronograph, and the catch box to be able to watch what the shot's doing. Um, and just where you can, I want you to see me where you know that I'm not tweaking anything, I'm not forcing this to happen, this is just what happens. So, here we go. All right, here we go. That's the chronograph, it's on feet per second. The catch box, I know it's blurry, but I, I, I want you guys to see the speeds on these, um, not necessarily the, uh, the target. I mean, you will be able to hear whether or not I hit anything. But right now, here is the 180 uh, millimeter active length bands. hundred and eighty six point eight and that shot was just below that 30 millimeter spinner the spinner I'm going for is let me see where's my is that little bitty one right there in the top that's the one I'm going for so I'm gonna do one more shot with these and I'm trying to not compensate and rip lift the frame up and shoot it 
see, still didn't hit it. So now then, that was the 180 set. Now I'm going to get the 170 set, and I think that the 170 active is going to be the sweet spot, but I'm not sure. Go ahead and move all these down here. But this is the 170 mil long set, like I said, same pouch, same everything. Just give me just a quick minute to get these uh, unwrapped and tucked, the ones I've got on here right now. I've been uh, messing around. I made a few of these pouches a while back just playing with shapes, and I really, really uh, I'm really enjoying them. Uh, only problem with making identical band sets is it gets confusing about which one goes on which. Just really quick, let me get these wrapped and tucked on here. I have a very kind of specific way I do my wrap and tuck. I don't, I use latex strips for my wrap and tuck and when I do the wrap and tuck I use my thumb but I take the tag in and I reach through with my index finger and grab it to where it gives me a little ear to grab hold of to be I don't know if you guys can see that or not but it's a little ear right here that I can pull out to pop the bands loose I'm thinking that 170 is going to be my sweet spot for uh, these bands because I don't want them so hot that I get a uh, hand slap. And that's what I do not like. I don't like getting hand slap. Um, it's one of the reasons I'm using this uh, Omega Electric White is because it's got a softer, uh, a softer feel, I guess you would say. But, okay, there we go. There's the 170 active. Let's give these a shot and see what they do. The last ones were 189 feet per second, so I'm assuming that these are going to be uh, breaking 200. Uh, maybe not. might be 195, but let's see. Oh, wow. 215. That was surprising. Still coming in just a little bit low. There we go. I'm not the greatest shot in the world, but. Oh, yeah. Just getting used to the feel of a little bit harder pull. It's not hard by any means, but. See, there we go, 215, 216. I like that, those feel good. Now what I'm predicting to happen, and this is the whole reason of making this video, that was the 170. I'm predicting that my shots are gonna go crazy when I put these uh, 160 and 150 bands on. That's my prediction. I don't know if that is true or not. So far, I know that when I have shot hotter bands on the 90 mil frames, um, I've not been hitting where I should be, where I'm aiming at. The shots have gone high, so. We're about to see right here in just a minute if my theory is correct. Um, if this is the if, if this kind of stuff interests you guys, please, you know, uh, give this video a thumbs up, comment, share it, and I'll try to do more of these. You know, the tech the technical side. I know that a lot of people don't talk about this about this part of it a lot 
um, about the science behind shooting a slingshot, but there is quite a bit of there's quite a bit of science that goes into it, quite a bit of physics, um, quite a bit of math, and it's not just all pull it back and let it go as much as we would like for it to be that way. But here we go. All right, here's the 160. No, it didn't go higher. Pretty well, still moving pretty fast, 230 feet per second, wow. There we go, uh -huh. dead centered it, so apparently 160 is not too hot. Okay, so let's go to 150. I may be completely wrong on this, guys. I don't know if I'm if I'm right or wrong. I, I don't know. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I'm doing this experiment because I do not know. May wind up just making a video showing how fast Omega Electric Quad is as you shorten it. But this is the active length. This active length is uh, the length that a roll of latex is wide. This is a 150 millimeter active length. And that 160 was giving me some pretty, not super, super bad hand slap, but it was enough to notice. And it was also the kind of, it's not something that I would want to shoot with all day. Um, maybe, you know, on a woods course or something like that. You know, you want your bands a little bit hotter because the targets are at various different distances. But for 10 meters shooting, especially knockdowns, whether you're punching paper or shooting knockdowns, for, uh, for 10 meters, why I don't need anything going, you know, 215, 220, that's fast to plenty. But okay, here we go. Here's 150 millimeters long, and let's see what happens with this. Okay, there we go. Just exactly what I thought would happen. I didn't even notice how fast it was. Well, I hit it that time, but I think I compensated for the shot. No, that first shot must have been a fluke. Yeah, must have been, because this is 238 feet per second, and I'm... Well, no, it went high that time, too. So I must, maybe I was compensating. No, hit it again. Nah, I'm just <clears throat> shooting inconsistently with these hotter bands. But I'm definitely hitting. Yeah, you guys can see the target move in this, okay. Now well, that one, that shot was high. A little bit high, so I'm definitely less consistent. And that one was high too. So that one was as well. Yeah, that one was high too. So yeah, I'm I know I hit it a few shots, but these shots are consistently going just a little bit high yeah just you know maybe an inch inch and a half high versus 
if I hold right underneath the target, it hits it. So yeah. And But now here is going to be the interesting part. Okay, here's going to be the interesting part. I have a 95 mil wide wiper that Tim Henry made me. And I am going to slap these same bands on it. Now it may take me a shot or two to get uh, dialed in with this because anytime you switch a frame, why you're going to have to <clears throat> adjust ever so slightly to shooting that uh, that slingshot. That's just last night in the uh, in the live raffle, Chuckin was talking about shooting a pickle fork, and he uh, said when I when he gets on with a pickle fork that it just that it throws him off on everything else. And once you get used to a certain feel and fork width of frame, with short draw, at least in my experience, and you switch to something else, why you have to, um, you know, it takes you a shot or two to get things dialed back in. So let me get these. wrapped and tucked onto this really quick. And then we'll see what the blood is. So here we go. Right, same bands, just on a different frame. This time, now that was right next to it. There we go. See, with a 95 mil wide frame, I get in and I'm right on it with these hotter bands, not with the 90. So, oh, right beside it again. But still yet, that's the shots aren't going high. So, kind of proved my point there. Um, so my plan is, you know, uh, since I know that I can shoot up to around 230 feet per second, um, with a 90 mil wide frame, that's going to be, for, for me now, it's just for me, that's going to be fast enough <clears throat> for every aspect of a, uh, of a competition. That's going to be more than fast enough, um, and now when it comes to uh, a, a hunting scenario, which is something that I like to do in, in the fall of the year when it's season. Some of you guys have seen my, you know, some of my pictures and things of that nature. Um, I, uh, I'll have to use a 95 mil wide frame because I use, uh, hotter bands at that t at that time of the year um, because I hunt with lead ammo so <clears throat> it'll be interesting to see how this all plays out all I know is is that right now I am uh, I'm shooting well I don't have any complaints on how I'm shooting or what I'm shooting and I am tickled to death to be able to shoot stuff to, uh, to be able to shoot a wider range of slingshots. That's my, that's been my big, uh, one of my biggest hurdles is all these awesome, awesome slingshots that people make. <clears throat> um, but they're all, you know, 90 mil wide. The, the vast, vast majority of slingshots, whether 
uh, production or otherwise are 95 or are 90 mil wide with only a few exceptions um, and so you know take well, I tied this 170 band set back on I'm gonna take a shot with it really quick I wiggled it, but I didn't hit it. I'm just missing right now. There we go. Welcome to the party. Yeah, around 215, 220 for 10 meters. That's going to be my go-to. Absolutely. But anyways, thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Hit that follow button. Hit the notification bell where you know we're putting out new content. If this is something you guys are interested in, let me know. I've got a lot of ideas and a lot of things that I would like to put out. And if there's an interest for it, I'll do it. In the meantime, shoot straight, stay safe.